Oh, were you going to vlog here? Oh. I had Is that what you did? you were setting them up. Just to get us walking, but you can, it's a pretty shot. Come on and vlog. Come on and vlog. Beautiful out. Well, you have to show them, yeah. Come here, vlog. Vlog, woman. Starting to do our multiple trips back to the barn every day. Checking on Luna. I'm waking up thinking, oh, gotta go check. So let's go check her out, see how she's doing. She's getting close to having that calf. How's that? Too wordy, right? Was it a good intro? Oh, I don't make a big fuss about that anymore. No? days out from Luna's due date. Now we can go a week on either side of that, as we know with Ladybug. Ladybug has a tendency to go earlier. I'm gonna keep an eye on Luna just in case she has that same tendency. I gotta turn that phone on. This is where we part ways. <laughs> I can't make it over that. We, we are enjoying these last nice days of fall. We've got one, about one more week left, and then next week's a super cold. I'm gonna start bringing Luna in at night, just in case she has that calf, it's not outside and whatever, whatever elements we may be getting. Plus, I'm not sure how she's gonna be as a mom. She was very, she was very confused with Ladybug's calf. She was doing the mama moves, she wanted liquor, I, I think, you know, something was clicking. Something maternal was clicking there. I don't want her to have a calf and Ladybug to adopt it at birth, so I just want to keep them at night separated and then during the day keep a close eye on them. She's hanging out out there, though. Today. Yeah, know. that is funny. She's like totally separated herself. Yeah. That's very interesting. Yeah. I'd love it if it happened today. Oh, it's beautiful. I, I want it to happen on one of these nice warm days. Like when Luna was born, it was November, but it was still really nice weather. Nice, warm. We sat outside in t-shirts. The cows want some cooler weather, though, so the flies finally all die. Huh, how you doing? She's being kind of funny today. She's standing away from everybody. She's licking her side. Hold on, trucks. You just David Attenborough this. <laughs> the Jersey cow. She's being kind of funny today. She's standing away from Ladybug, off by herself, licking her sides a lot. Her udder is filling up, but her teats aren't real tight and strutting yet. I've never had a, a, a heifer freshening for the first time. It's only a week early. She may just be, be here taking my time. It's a week and a few days.
Meanwhile, while Kay is busy mentally preparing for our first time freshening, I am busy mentally preparing for fixing our mud problem here, our drainage issues. We've talked a lot about prepping for this project. My parents are gonna be coming down in about a month and uh, my dad, as some of you know, has an excavation business. He's gonna be bringing down a machine and his expertise, him and mom are coming to help for a couple days. And uh, we got the materials. I wanna tell you what we're gonna do back here because uh, you always have great ideas in the comment section. Maybe there's something we're not thinking of that you can add to it. So let's take a look. This paddock, this back two paddocks, are where we have our biggest problem with all this nasty water coming off the hill and then sitting. Right now we've got the cows electric fenced out of it. That way they're not bathing the nasty, mucky water. Stop focusing on that baby camera. Oh, even it's though he's so cute. cute. That's good for it. Rowan? Right, yeah. So even though the cows can be fenced out of this area, we still don't want the sitting water. We want this to be dry and draining and really this whole little valley where our barn is to be dry and draining. So right now we have a lot of standing water. This hasn't been a problem in the past. There hasn't been as much rainfall as we've gotten in the last couple of years and they never had large livestock here. Cows have a way of really mucking things up. So, <laughs> there's a home study t-shirt. So what we're gonna do is put a curtain drain, some people call them French drains. We're gonna be putting a curtain drain on this side of the barn, lengthwise. I'll get B-roll after. <laughs> this side of the barn, lengthwise, it's gonna come back here and turn like an L, and then it's gonna come across the front, or I should say the back of the barn here, across the back and go out over the hillside over there into a drain pipe over on the hillside, which then goes down into a energy distributing pond so the water doesn't cause erosion. That curtain drain will have perfor perforated pipe and gravel. It'll take all the groundwater and rainwater and send it off over the hill. Now while we're doing that, we're also gonna put in a couple of traction mats here. Uh, we're gonna put filter fabric paper down, big gravel and then small gravel, and eventually maybe at the top even some sand, but we'll, we'll see if we need the sand in later. So we'll have a big area here and on that side where it's all gravel and the animals can walk across it, there's no standing water. That should also dry out this section back here which will not be in gravel. That'll still be in, uh, dirt. that'll still be dirt. At the back of these traction mats over here, right about here, we're gonna put a frost-free, energy-free cow waterer. We're gonna install it here with a water line coming from the hydrant at the front of the barn. And what that'll do is all winter long, instead of this, is instead of having this thing all winter long with an electric cord plugged into it, running into the barn, with the heater element draining us of energy and money, uh, we'll just have an automatic, on-demand, frost-free, energy-free water. And of course, we'll show you how we install that, so if it's something you want to do in the future, you can do it at your homestead. I think we're gonna install it over here. We wanna install it right about here in the fence line, so that way, actually, two different paddocks can have access to the one water. They're about $500. So if we could only have one but have it service two paddocks, that'd be a much better use of our money. They're expensive, but I think in the long run they're gonna save us money and be worth it. The last thing we're gonna do is over here, over in this section, The last thing that we talked about doing while we're already working out here with machines and everything. What's the matter, little boy? Oh, you're gonna be fussy. He's tired. The last thing that we want to do, we're gonna be coming across here with that drain it with that drain. That'll separate this little nook over here from the rest of this paddock. In the future, we want to turn this little nook into a little pig pad like what we had at Squash Hollow. Back at Squash Hollow, we had our pigs on concrete. And uh, of course, we put layer and layer of hay on the concrete so they had nice soft places to lay. But feeding them and having their water on concrete helps keep them much cleaner and uh, 
helps with worms, helps with all sorts of things. Pig pad, which we will actually do in the spring, but for now we're gonna plan for it and prep for it while we have a machine here and concrete and all that stuff. That way in the springtime we can just pour concrete, set it up for piggies and bring in some pigs, which I guess I'm letting the cat out of the bag. We are planning on pigs this spring. I have gone too long without raising pigs. First calf heifer. Yeah, close. Closer. You're like so far away. Okay, come on. One more step. Right there. We have never had a first calf freshener. First, do that again. You got it? We've never right had. On. You ready for this? Excuse me? I'm just making sure. Are you heckling me? I'm rolling tape. Are you heckling? <laughs> you huh. Huh. This is. I'm trying not to say first twice. That's what I'm trying to avoid. Okay. We have never had a first calf heifer before. Nailed it. <laughs> Heckler. So Luna's never had a baby, which means I'm kind of, I don't know what to expect with her. I don't know if she's going to, her teats are going to be full. I don't know what her ligaments are going to look like. I don't know how puffy her vulva is going to get, all that fun stuff is kind of an unknown right now. So we're just keeping a close eye on her. And every little thing she does that's different is now just making me go, hmm, what's going on? So she's standing away from the herd today. I'm thinking, what's going on with her? I'm gonna keep a close eye on her today and start bringing her in at night because she's gonna be confused as a mother, just like Lacey and Gizmo were. I'm anticipating that we're gonna have to help her out a little bit, figure out what's going on with the calf. That means I want the calf to be born in a warm, draft-free situation right off the bat, just in case she doesn't understand to lick it and start warming it up right away. Get out of here, Chucka. There she is, off in the corner. Everybody's being funny today. Go eat some grass. Yeah. I wonder if it'll fit under there. It might not. It's not warm. Using all the chickens to each other, making sure they're calm with the baby. They'll get used to each other. In a couple of weeks, we should be able to do that now. Yeah, it's hopefully less than that. It would be. Yeah. I mean, hey, are you a chicken? Look at that chicken. Okay, go, you, over here, you lay eggs. Give us a little blueberry update. And try to remember not to start with the word so. That's something daddy works on a lot. Wow. Instead of going so, it's called a word whisker. So just think about what you want to say and then just power right into it, looking right at the camera. Mm, I gotta think of what I need to say. Why can't you use the word so? It's a word whisker. Daddy tries not to say it too. I still say it, but just get into the habit of not starting with so. We move the blueberries today because they're getting bigger and as they get bigger we want the other chickens to get used to the uh, to them so that when they're all big we, they don't all start a big fight right We all move we moved them in to the chicken stall now the chickens can get in but they can see them and they can hear them so it's not like totally new when everybody's running around. So that's the update for the blueberries today. Good job. Very nice. And then the feeder can go over here. There are another spawners for them all. It's better if they all have if there's more nipples and it, they can get to all the nipples so that they're not fighting over water. So you want it, them all to get as many nipples on the water at, 
what's the word? It was possible? X. Access? Yeah, access as possible. Good job. Okay. So I would get a tape measurement. And he's like, huh, what's this? Okay. Hmm. We're all gonna be trying to get to their food. Oh, that naughty Betty, look at her. Naughty mm. Betty. Naughty Betty. Trying to steal their food. Oh yeah. I'm gonna measure it from like there. Like this. That's a 28. That's a 28. Won't even fit for that. I think we might wouldn't be better if you squeeze it. They're not going to be in there very long. We just want everyone to get used to each other so they're not all fighting. And besides those ones are little, the bigger chickens like the roosters could definitely hurt them. So right now we're just keeping them separate and they'll get used to them. Excellent.